Okay, so I'm going to try and make this video as clear and concise as I possibly, possibly can with a limited amount of time to speak. My name is Connie Jean Nolibean, and um, I decided to do this video project <laughs> at the beginning of 2020 to record <laughs> things that are going on <clears throat> in my world <clears throat> as kind of a, excuse me, as kind of a documentation um, and what a year <laughs> to, to pick to do that. So first and foremost, I really, really hope that those who are protesting are staying safe, they are staying hydrated, and they are eating and finding ally places to stay when they are needed as much as possible. We already know that our hospitals are overfilled. So before you go to a protest, if you know of someone that lives in the area or somewhere nearby within a mile radius, your best bet is to find someone who can house you for a period of time long enough to clean up or you know get bandaged up or whatever you need hydrate and eat um with all that being said um i'm not necessarily sitting here condoning a bunch of violence upon um other people i don't think that that's a good idea but at this point we've reached uh an impasse the entire country right now as we speak is exploding almost every state has at least one city that has protests going on and reports are coming in from different cities that once the police get tired after a certain amount of time like six or seven o'clock i don't know if it was an underground order or what what happened but basically um police were escalating things people were even who were protesting were even trying to uh to stop that from happening they were pulling people away from buildings and um from from vehicles and whatnot and they were still um getting hurt uh, medics who are clearly marked are getting pepper sprayed and rubber and wooden bullets are being fired on them. Um, and this is across the board. Um, all of a sudden things are going from, um, you know, you've got peaceful protests with signs and people are trying to do the right thing and then something will trigger it. And it's been nine times out of ten when a curfew is about to start or whatever, the police will start to use force. At this point, this is not when you start using violence because that's when they win. Because according to our laws right now, we're stuck in this uh, vortex where um, you can't hurt a police officer even if they hurt you. <clears throat> Which is part of the reason why nine times out of ten you see that African American people are not fighting back when they're, they're scared, right? Or when they think that they're about to get hurt or shot or whatever. They're not fighting back because the laws that protect the the police are so strong uh, when it comes to civilians and we understand that from violent offenders and whatnot you know you don't want the people who are coming there to try and help you um there to not be some kind of justice or ramification right but at the same time people are are th at this point people of authority police officers are using that those particular laws in order to cause chaos because they can um, they are actually firing on people. They are actually firing on civilians who are trying to peacefully protest. So, um, bear in mind that these laws are, are scary. Okay. We have one instance of a woman trying to plow through a, a, um, crowd, um, while she is, um, touting, I, from what I understand, I could be wrong on this report, but um, touting Trump flags and, and um, the um, old rebel flag, um, which is, you know, the red with the crosses on the cross on it, the stars. Um, and she tried to run, she ran people over just like what happened in Charlottesville. Um, we have people who are bringing guns and bows and arrows and going into the crowds and firing and then therefore inciting things and they're getting paid to do this. Um, we have businesses that are doing the smart thing where they're trying to mark their buildings and tell them, you know, privately owned business or please don't break down. And most of the time, and I'm, I'm telling you this from, from what I'm seeing from reports and everything, that people are not deliberately starting out doing that. That's not what they're starting out doing. And it's only when um, things escalate and they get shot and they get hurt that the violence are, and, and the destruction is starting to to uh, take a hold. Um, do not bring children to protests. Do not do it. Find someone to watch your kid, okay? Um, especially in this time where we're at a double-edged sword right now where 
people are angry and scared. Um, if you have medical backgrounds at all, please try very, very hard to make sure that the respiratory damage done to people is minute when it comes to pepper spray. However, you know, you can't really do much about it if they've already inhaled a bunch of it. Just try and get them to rinse it off and, and clean it up as much as they possibly can before seeking attention. <sighs> I cannot tell you right now my feeling. Well, I can. I can tell you my feelings on this. I've been angry for years. Um, ever since the Charleston 9 happened, um, which I actually lived in Raleigh, North Carolina, at the time that Charleston 9 happened. And I had a friend of mine who lived in Charleston, South Carolina, that told me, you know, that was my grandma. <laughs> one of my grandmothers that died, that got shot. And... You know, I have always been about the underdog because I'm already a woman. I'm already poor. Um, a lot of things are at a disadvantage for me. I can't imagine in a million years what it is like to have the color of your skin be another, like, reason to hurt you, right? You're already vulnerable enough as a woman that, you know, if you haven't been sexually assaulted everybody around you has. And so when you pile that on top of women having to tell their children, um, black women try having to tell their, their sons and their daughters how to stay safe around cops because they're terrified that one day they're going to get pulled over and they're going to die and the footage is going to get covered up. Um, it's just, it's awful. It's painful. And if we don't speak out as, as white people, if we don't sit here and actually use this to our advantage and take these bullets for these people and actually do what is actually right, if we don't take this power back for them, if we do not defend them, we are fucking next. As a matter of fact, all of these laws are, are still pertaining to us right now. Now, a lot of people like to show me statistics about how white people are marginally killed more and all this other stuff. And it depends on statistics in the cities and all this different stuff. And, and they like to bring up black on black crime a lot because for some reason that's also a statistic they like to throw in. I don't understand it. There is a vast fucking difference between regular crime that's going on and a person of authority who's supposed to be protecting you taking away every bit of your rights and murdering you, okay? There is a vast difference. And you cannot tell me that there's not, okay? <clears throat> the guy down the street could be real mad at me and could want to beat my ass, right? Could want to do that. I still have the ability of some kind of authority to come and look after me. When it comes to the policeman down the street wanting to kick my ass, there's nothing I can do. At this point, I'm fucked, and it doesn't matter <clears throat> how much I want to protest. It doesn't matter how much, how badly it gets, right? It doesn't matter if he kills me, right? It might matter a little bit. I mean, it probably would matter in a lot of people's eyes because I, I affect the world around me, but shit, that's what I'm saying. The difference. People don't understand that these deaths are unwarranted and unjustified and no one's gotten justice for it whatsoever because there's so many laws and brothership, like the brothership, brotherhood that protects these guys. Like, okay, there's a difference between there's an armed robbery situation going on and I'm afraid for my life and I might have to pull my gun, right? <clears throat> armed robbery. Understood. If there is an African-American man that you have asked for a wallet back and he is trying to reach in his pocket to give you his wallet, not afraid for your life. Just shooting. If you don't see the difference between these two things, then I don't fundamentally understand your thinking at this point. Right? So like I said, I'm trying to be concise because I have a lot of fucking feelings about this. Um, you know, so the Charleston 9 happened and we see time and time again people being pulled over in their cars, dash cams not working, body cams not working, body cams showing people being planted with drugs <clears throat> and then going, oh, well, that's just a fluke. And meanwhile, you've got all these people in jail for petty crimes and possession and all this stuff. And you wonder, well, how much of that was actually them actually, you know, having the paraphernalia on them, or was it actually somebody 
planting it on them. Like you have to question everything at this point. Right? Little kids getting fucking gunned down, guys. And, and you know, it, the person's worth is not relative to the other people that, that they care about, right? It sh shouldn't be that that guy was somebody's son or somebody's husband. Or you shouldn't have to fucking preach the merit of a human being to let them everyone know that their life fucking mattered. Their life mattered. They affected the people around them just like you affect the people around you. And whether or not that's a positive change or not doesn't fucking matter. I've bounced checks before. Does that mean I get my neck crushed? Does it fucking matter? My life does not equal money. It should not equal money anyway. On the grand scheme of things. So yeah. I work in industries. My main professions in my life have been around people who are minorities who are also poor and I watch them suffer in agony and in silence as they feel like they cannot do a fucking thing about it so if you're a fucking ally if you say you're an ally if you say for a minute hey I want to help these people I want things to get better I'm tired of systemic injustice I'm tired of systemic racism fucking do something about it. Take those bullets. Take the pepper gas in the face. Do what you have to do. Stop people from trying to sabotage the protests. Make it fucking abundantly clear what they're doing to our media. That's the other thing too. Police officers are actively shooting our media. They're actively shooting our media. I don't know if there's something going on where some newscasters are getting through and through, but I have seen active arrests and active shootings for no less than four reporters on national, like, national news streams, okay? That's not okay. None of this is okay. This takes away our right to protest. It takes away our right to... <clears throat> excuse me, free, free speech. It, it takes away our rights to have uh, free and unimpeded journalism. These are all the Constitution. These are all things that people have the American dream, wet dreams about. Well, you can't change the Constitution. You can't change the Constitution. The Constitution is being violated right in front of you, right in front of you on national news. People are dying or being hurt severely. Where were their rights? Where was their constitution? Where was it? Because right now, all I see is one man of four got arrested for murder three for the malice of, of smothering someone for eight minutes. And that's one injustice. Do you guys remember the lady that ended up like getting pulled over for traffic and she didn't want to cooperate with the cop because he had no reason whatsoever to pull her over and then she ended up getting hung in her jail cell and then suddenly there was no footage whatsoever? None? And she was supposed to be on watch? Like, <clears throat> or the social worker. It ran outside because cops were worried about a suspicious adult man sitting in the middle of the road. He was playing with his trucks. He was autistic. And this social worker, who, a therapist that happened to be his caregiver, is African-American sitting there begging them to not shoot, begging them with his hands up, obviously not armed, gets shot anyway. And his response is, I don't understand because we all don't understand, right? We don't. None of us understand this. And it's our fucking duty as white people who are saying that they are allies to go out here and do the very fucking best we can. Now, I understand there are some of you out there that have very young children, so you can't go out and do this because you're scared you're going to get arrested or you're scared of this, that, and the other thing. So first of all, I don't know if you guys are aware or not, but the generation before us, a bunch of people were arrested for protests and stuff, and they still carried about their lives and had very successful lives, actually. Made lots of money and whatnot. Still had arrest records. Um, but I, you know, there's a lot of things going on right now all at the same time. It's very, very difficult to try and make your thoughts as concise as possible. And I, I think I've gotten the majority of the thoughts out there. Um, I'm sitting in my car because I'm actually over at a friend's house. I'm helping them right now, um, get things together. Uh, people are going to start going back to work soon in South Carolina. 
Um, so things are looking scarier and scarier, right? Um, but on top of all of that, um, this catalyst of just zero empathy from the top, um, zero care, zero any legislation whatsoever saying, all right, everybody needs to stay indoors and take care of themselves until, you know, the end of July or whatever. You know, no, nope, they're giving the rights back to the states and the states, of course, want their money machines back. So they're making people work again, even though there's nothing to, to pr protect us. Right. So they just want the economy back. They don't actually care about the individual humans at all. That was that was one of the many, many catalysts that have started this just panicked injustice that we're all fucking suffering right now. And all I have to say is good. I'm glad something lit a fire under people's asses because this is ridiculous. This shouldn't happen anymore. This should not be a thing. We should not be seeing on news any of these examples. And I don't care about, the like, again, people throwing these statistics out and I keep going, we shouldn't have these statistics to begin with. We shouldn't have people who are supposed to be taking care of us not doing the right thing. We should be able to you know, speculate and actually look at an arrest and go, okay, that was by the book. That was, I understand why that happened. Or I absolutely, you know, that's, that's whatever. You should not have any questionable deaths at all. And the fact that we have to continually do that is, is something that severely needs to be addressed, right? Mm. We cannot at this very moment in time, in the next three or four days, people are going to start getting tired and they're going to start getting sick and they're going to start getting overwhelmed and they're going to want to go back to life as normal because that's the status quo and we know, our, we understand our comfort, right? We understand our comfort levels and how much we can take and whatnot. That is not the time to give them back their power though. We are many and they are few, right? That, that is not the time. Continue your peaceful protests. Continue. They cannot contain, they cannot contain and kill us all. They can't. They need their money machine back. If we want to get down to brass tacks, they need, they want their money machine back in order. So it's our job to help them understand that they're not the reason why the money machine keeps going. Okay. I know it's going to be fucking hard. This is really fucking hard, right? It's really fucking scary. But imagine living your entire fucking life that way. Uh, for just a second, can you try and imagine what it would be like to live your life constantly worried that the next officer you see might arrest you for no reason whatsoever? And kill you. I'm itchy, guys. Bugs. Sorry, it's, you know, beginning of June in the South. We have to keep fighting for our friends. We can't sit by the sidelines anymore. We can't. We don't have that fucking luxury. We never had that luxury. We were given a, a veil, a lie. Somebody around, somebody told us somewhere that this was okay. And we, we watched in increments. It's kind of like when you're in an abusive relationship. It really is. I mean, and at first they only hit you once, right? And, and then after that, well, they only arrested, right? They didn't actually hurt anybody or kill anybody or anything. And then it's, they only contained them for a little while. And then it's, well, only a couple of people have died. At this point, we're looking at, we have been thrown down the fucking stairs, guys. We've been thrown down the stairs. Our faces are split open and bleeding now. And we have to decide for ourselves, are we, are we, are we done? Have we had enough? Or do we need to be thrown down the stairs a few more times? Because I tell you from experience, the more you're abused like that, the less inclined you are to fight. started with the war on drugs. It started with the stop and frisk rules and laws in different cities. It started with casual arrests for no reason and let go. 
It started with people automatically assuming the minute people get pulled over and taken out of their cars that they're, that they're criminals. It started with Cops, the TV show. There's so many different things that told us that this was okay. And we've been dying slowly. And we've been given these bombs of we're going to defend our liberty. We, we've, been, we've been given these bombs of defending our liberty with like our right to whether or not we want to wear a fucking mask in Trader Joe's. That shit's not important. I mean, it is important. Don't fucking get me sick. Wear a goddamn mask. You wear shoes. You wear a shirt. Come on. You don't bleed all over the floor, wherever you go. That's... So... Instead of being the abused partner that is sitting there saying, Oh no, he'll get better. He just gets mad sometimes. I just have to change my dress or my suit or whatever. I just need to remember this was what made them mad. Make them mad. Don't let them have this control anymore. Don't let them have this power over us anymore. It's going to get scary. Um, there are people, more people are probably going to die. M more people are going to get arrested. Um, systemic laws are not easy to combat because you literally have to tear the system down from the bottom up. We literally have to eyeball every single one of our precincts. We have to not arm every single precinct with weapons of war. Because that's what some of uh, the War on Terror did, was literally give, you know, little podunk communities fucking military-grade Humvees and anti-aircraft missiles and shit. They've been quietly equipping to, to go against the people for a while. Um, and we've quietly let them. And, you know, I sit here as an almost 40 year old woman telling you that this is my fault just as much as it is every other person, every other white person that could have gone and done something about this six years ago, could have done something about this 10 years ago. We didn't. We thought it would get better. We thought they were in isolated incidents. We didn't realize the pain that our, you know, African-American and Hispanic and Muslim friends were going through. We didn't want to see it. We didn't want to because that would mean that our safe and cozy little lives were lies. We were okay with getting thrown down the stairs. We were okay with getting slapped every once in a while. It's, it's painful and it's hard. But any kind of change like this, it's like drawing infection from the wound. And we have to do it. Or we're going to lose everything, guys. We're going we're to lose every right we have. Every single one. They're going to slowly but surely chip them away. I think I felt like I had more to say, but I, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else will help anyone. This is for all of us, guys. This isn't just, it's not, it's not race. It is, but it isn't, right? It's race in terms of we need to stop seeing our, our black and Hispanic and um, any other ethnicity out there people that live in our country, we need to stop seeing them get hurt. When those targets are no more, who are they going to go to? Who are they going to hurt next? You know? It's about race in the sense that that's who's being targeted right now. 
but it's not about race and the fact that we're all losing our freedoms and we're all losing them one droplet at a time, one slap at a time, one death at a time. We're losing them because we're letting them be lost. We are. We're letting it. We're letting it happen. I love you guys very much. I'm deeply scared, but I'm going to keep fighting anyway because no matter how scared I am, my friends are more scared. And courage isn't about not being scared. It's about doing it anyway. Because you know it's right. Stay strong, okay? Please drink water and eat. S stay strong. Stay strong for your friends. They need you. They need you more than ever right now.